This bittersweet heat is suffocating I'm waiting and always hesitating Kryptonite desires set my heart afire Heart on fire Set my heart afire This is probably one of the worst ideas that I've ever had. It's 9.04 and I'm starting to apply my first coat of epoxy to the bottom of the hull. Which means that I won't be done until 9 in the morning. I'm going to get started. This is going to suck. A lot. Okay, I'm going to start applying this epoxy and see what happens. Let's see what happens when I put it on over this marker. Pretty much disappears into the background. Okay, the good news is that it looks like it goes on decently thick. With cribs and secrets and forbidden bliss can't stay Still don't stop the thrill My bones crave your skin Temptation within Mistakes ignite the silence Nightmares creep While you and me repeat This bittersweet heat Is suffocating Hesitating, kryptonite desires set my heart afire. Heart on fire, set my heart afire. I put down a hundred grams of material and discovered that I made quite a mistake. Well, two mistakes actually. One was not just using the roller, but the second mistake was that I, in the past, have used a magic marker or a permanent marker, one of these red ones here. I've used that under a few different kinds of epoxy and I've never had any issue with it. So I decided in a few spots where I sanded through, I would take a little green Sharpie and touch up some of the spots. They actually turned silver when I, uh, when I sanded through and hit the green thread, it turned silver as it removed the green pigment. So I decided to go over it with the green Sharpie and it hid all of those spots pretty good. But the problem is, is that the green Sharpie is also acting basically as a mold release. It doesn't allow the epoxy to stay on it. I'm going to 
get this other 100 grams on there and keep going over it with the roller to try to get it to go on evenly and to stop it from running severely. This stuff is very low viscosity and it's pretty obvious in how much it likes to run. So even as thin as it is now, it wants to run and I plan on putting it on thicker. So it's going to be a good time. It's going to be, it's going to be a fun night. No matter how much I prepare this roller, it's going to leave crap in the surface of the uh, epoxy. I've learned that from using a few of them already, so I'm not going to go real nuts in preparing it. For those of you who have never seen this process before, I'll try to give a good example of it. I put the material down with the roller and you can see, hopefully the camera can pick up, there's a bunch of bubbles there. So what you do is once you get it rolled down, you go over the surface with the brush and uh, the, the, the bubbles come out. So you just lightly go over it with the brush and you knock the bubbles out and then in a couple of minutes it all levels out and you get a nice bubble free smooth surface with the exception that this is a crappy paintbrush and now I have stuff in the paint <laughs> 10 56 p.m. the first coat has been applied and I have four or five more coats to go. I got most of the air bubbles out, so what I did is I applied the epoxy. I then hit it twice with the paintbrush, so I went over it once with the paintbrush and knocked air bubbles out. Then I started at the beginning and went over it again with the paintbrush and knocked more air bubbles out. I then got the heat gun, which I discovered works really good. I had to first take the heat gun outside and blow it out with compressed air to make sure there was no dust in it because I didn't want to turn it on and blow a whole bunch of dust right onto my uh, fresh epoxy. But uh, I went over it with the heat gun on the low setting and it burst a whole bunch more bubbles. There are still some things in the surface that look like bubbles. Some of them are little bristles from the roller. And some of them are actually just low spots from where the epoxy isn't bonding perfectly to the surface. I think in a lot of cases what it is is where I sanded through to the plastic or very close to the plastic in the carbon weave. The plastic actually doesn't bond as well to the epoxy as the carbon does and so you get inconsistencies in the, uh, the way the epoxy pools. I do have uh, three or four more applications to go before I get the desired thickness that I want. So the potential for screwing this up is still there. <laughs> It is looking quite good. If it turns out kind of this good but thicker then I can for sure sand wet sand it down and buff it and have a really nice finish so uh, the only thing that i kind of wish well the main thing that i wish that i hadn't done is put down the magic marker or the sharpie uh, this marker here seems to create a surface that bonds quite well with epoxy but the actual sharpie markers or at least the green sharpie marker creates a surface that the epoxy does not bond to very well. About 10 minutes after two in the morning and I'm coming out to check to see if the epoxy's tacked up, but I don't think it will be. Yeah, it's still 
still coming off on my fingers super easily. I'm not sure if I was pointing the camera in the right way. Pardon me, it's two in the morning. So what I think I'm gonna do is set a timer for two hours and try to get a little bit of sleep and then get up and then put another coat on. That By that time, it will be four in the morning. So then I'll get that coat finished up by five and then I'll set an alarm for, yeah, four or five hours, which will give me a half decent sleep. All right, YouTube, it is currently 20 after four in the morning and I am about to mix up my second batch to put down on this. <laughs> I can't talk. Um, I'm a little bit worried because this stuff isn't super, super tacky yet. If I work the material that I'm putting down too much, it's probably going to affect the lower layer. I'm sure the camera probably doesn't pick up on the detail, but I got coverage on some of the places that wouldn't cover the first time around. So I'm really happy with that. It is currently almost six in the morning, so I'm gonna set an alarm for uh, five hours from now and come back out and put another coat on. I still have to clean off this roller. Uh, one trick that I learned is reusing the roller uh, puts a lot less crap into the epoxy, so. I'm gonna scrape the epoxy off of this and then clean it off with acetone like I did last time. And uh, then I can reuse it again for the next coat. Oh, I was gonna say that in places it does look a little bit milky. And I think that is due to the uh, epoxy that I used the first time around. So I'm glad I switched over to the infusion epoxy. It's a lot more clear. And it also lays out a lot more smooth, as you guys can see. It is now 10 minutes after 11 in the morning, and the stuff is still coming off on my finger. This is stuff that dripped on the floor from the first time. It is setting up, so that's good news. But the stuff that I put on last is uh, still wet to the touch. I'm gonna have to wait probably at least another hour. I am extremely tired. Getting a few hours of sleep at a time is not an ideal way to, uh, <laughs> to get sleep. It is currently 1.30. I don't know if I'm even doing the math right anymore, but I think it's been about seven hours and this stuff is still tacky. It's at a good point now to add stuff. It's not coming off on my finger. I just finished putting down the third coat of epoxy and it probably could have been my last. I still might allow this to be the last coat of epoxy, but I had a little bit of a goof up. Basically, I put the cup of epoxy down right here and what it did was it sunk into the lower level of epoxy well that is looking pretty amazing i'm going to get out of the garage now and set a timer for seven hours that's right it took seven hours to set up last time so i'm going to set a timer and try to leave this alone and not mess with it and then come back and I might put a fourth coat on. I probably will. I'm going camping tomorrow which is Tuesday and I'm not getting back until Friday so I'm going to have to wait until Friday to see when it's fully cured myself because I'm going to be away for the week. But that is going to give this plenty of opportunity to fully cure without me messing with it, which is really good because ordinarily I'd be wanting to wet sand it the next day.
<laughs> what you doing, huh? So we have literally been away all week. I just got the trailer parked. It's not unpacked yet, and I haven't yet opened the garage door. I gotta get in here to unpack the truck and load my work stuff back into it. So let's let's check out the X2 and see how it's doing. While I'm doing that fiberglass work, it doesn't make sense just to do little patch jobs here and there. So I'm actually going to strip everything out of the hull. And yeah, we'll see how far this goes. It might turn into a complete refinishing of the outside of the jet ski. The more I look at this, the more it uh, becomes obvious that a front fill is no longer an option. I'm going to have to do that. There is a huge amount of filling that I would have to do through this area. I'm not sure how far the front fill actually goes. I think it would come back to about here. Hopefully it would come back a little bit further, but if it comes back to here, that'd be okay. I'm using plasticine to build up the front and then I'm going to smoothen it all out. And once it's all built up, smoothened out, I'll probably... <laughs> I'm assuming that it's hardened up over the week. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Very happy. There's a little bit of little bit of dust settled on the top of it. Very, very nice. I am extremely happy with this. Now that I've showed you guys the hull and drooled over it a little bit, I'm sure you could hear the drooling through the camera. I'm going to go over it and show you guys some of the imperfections. Uh, I'm not sure how much of it the camera will be able to pick up, but it will definitely be able to pick up some of them. So let's see. I just saw one when I was about to film this clip right here. I actually sanded through in one spot and touched the carbon weave and you can see silver spots. You can see there's no green and you can see the silver spots in a few places there. Um, one of the more drastic ones is back here somewhere. Where is it? I just saw it. Oh, right here. There we go. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell with the camera because there's so much glare. But there is a bit of an imperfection here. I sanded through there as well. And the reason why I sanded through in these few spots is because they actually bubbled up or bulged up a little bit. So the carbon fiber itself didn't stick down perfectly. Or it stuck down perfectly when I used the Super 71 but then it released when I hit it with the epoxy and I didn't realize that it had kind of bubbled up in a few places. So I'm not going to be finishing it any further uh, in this video. I'm going to try to get a few good pictures of it. And then this video is going to end here. I will come back to this once I get some other stuff done. This project still has a lot of work to do. Those of you who have just been following the carbon fiber skinning may not know, but I am installing a different engine. This X2 comes with a 650 twin, and I'm installing a 1100 triple into this hull. So I got a lot of work ahead of me yet. 
With the final product, this will all be wet sanded down. I'm not gonna go crazy trying to smooth every little bit of it out because that's just not going to be possible. Um, but I am gonna try to get some, there's little imperfections like this where there's little, uh, yeah, just bubbles and bristles and bug wings and whatever. Little, little imperfections that uh, I can get out with wet sanding. I'll probably start with a 600 and uh, yeah, end off with a, a 2000 or something like that with a few grits in between and then hit it with a polishing compound, get it all nice and polished. It's currently 302 on Friday, July 30th. And uh, I've been out camping all week and haven't had any internet service. I ended up driving probably about close to 20 miles to get service one day and had to answer some work emails so I wasn't able to do anything else and uh, so yeah I am quite far behind on videos not sure when this one is actually going to come out I've got uh, work to catch up on and uh, videos to edit so the top side of this hull is getting covered in patterned uh, carbon fiber it's not getting covered in this same stuff it's all black, but it has a checkerboard pattern to it. <laughs> it kind of looks like a Gucci or Louis Vuitton handbag fabric. And uh, the top of the ski is going to get covered in that stuff. Not sure when that's going to happen. It's a long, hard process, and I still have a lot of engine work to do, pump work to do. I got to get this thing assembled. And so probably for a little while some of the cosmetic stuff is going to get put on the back burner while I get this thing actually to go on the water. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.